How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do one of the big contracts uh, starting the power plant. I've been wanting to get this one done, that's why I built the factories bridge the other day because I'm going to be cutting across there. Uh, yeah, these are the weapons I've chose. I'm going to use the Tager, uh, the Derry, but that gets substituted, I'll explain why, and then I'm going to pair the uh, Bruce and the Paystar together. And uh, yeah, because I'm going to need fuel and I need 8 lots of them. I didn't really want to use the 8 slot trailer because it drives me a bit mad. Hence why I'm pairing uh, Bruce and the Paystar up. Bruce has got a 5 slot trailer, the Paystar's got a 3 slot sideboard. That equals 8. Uh, yeah, this is the route I'm taking. So kind of from the base, cut down, I'm a bit naff with the footage there, but the first part I'm just cutting through the farm, down to that fuel storage, cut across there, get fuel, cut across the middle island and zip up to the power plant. And it was all looking pretty good. Now what I was going to do is grab those metal beams with a derry, kind of loop around this way, grab them and nip them up to there, but then I realised uh, if I just stick a ramped flatbed on the uh, paystar, I'm pretty much driving past there anyway with Bruce and the paystar when I get the fuel so I, I sort of took a trader instead, and then I'm going to bring the Tager down to that railway station, grab the cargo containers and the consumables and then that's the mission complete, and uh, if you look in rewards I get money and XP, but it says access to locations, two of them the first one is this on the middle island, which is a metal produce rolling plant or whatever you can use metal beams to produce metal rolls so in theory we've now got unlimited metal rolls the second place it unlocks is that which is a brick production factory yesterday in my own time i nipped down to the quarry cargo creation zone 2 took a generator and fuel there the only thing you can make is packaged sand but to make the bricks you need packaged sand and cement cement you can get at cargo creation zone 1 i'll explain it a little bit more at the end once i've unlocked everything but yeah, that's the first route I'm taking, and again, like I say, I'm pairing up um, yeah, Bruce and the Paystar for this one. I kind of want to bring the Paystars, it's fairly new, but it worked out pretty nicely, because like I said, I've got to go and get 8 fuel for this. And Well, the only way I can get 8 fuel with one truck, so I'm not doing tandem trucks, is to take the 8 slot trailer. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. it gets stuck everywhere, it's awkward. I know once I go past the fuel station and I go onto that middle island, there's a bit of a wiggly road, rocks in the way and all sorts. I edited a bit out there, by the way. It wouldn't let me attach the winch again to the uh, paystar. After trying a few times, it did, so it's obviously some kind of glitch. Um, yeah, and that, so I just really wasn't keen on the, uh, like I said, the eight-slot trailer. So I decided on this, brought a goddamn horse of a vehicle with me. OG Loaf's coming along, just, again, extra extra winch just in case. Uh, extra fuel, repairs if anything goes wrong, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, I've got the five-slot step deck, so I can get five pieces of fuel with Bruce. And then the Paystar, like I said, originally, I was just going to bring the Paystar as itself, as it has uh, this new, like, three-slot side bed. Which, yeah, in this sense, works out pretty handy. Like I said, I'd probably rather just take, yeah, Bruce and a five-slot with the Paystar behind to make up the eight for the fuel. But, as I said, while I was uh, about ready to start this mission, I kind of realised I already got my dairy set up in the yard, ready to go. That's uh, got another loaf with them as well just in case for uh, repairs and everything but yeah it kind of made sense by now I kind of knew this would be uh, well the nice thing is it's a bit of a long road train it's definitely again one of the longer ones um, that's what she said and yeah so because Bruce has got the advanced special special sort of gearboxes I know I wouldn't be going flying anyway and in that case with the ramped flatbed just towing along behind fingers crossed it shouldn't be too much of a pain in the arse because like I said I've, I've never been keen on the ramped flatbed it tips too easily and, uh, I mean, that's part of the reason why I've got a crane on the Paystar, but I've also got a crane on Bruce. So, if at any point the the ramped flatbed I'd expect out of anything to be tipping, um, yeah, I can load it all back up. I don't have to then go all the way back to the garage and bring some, uh, yeah, some crane vehicle to sort it out. And for the most part, this is the slow part of the mission, really. I am going to cut about four minutes of it out. I'm still going to leave some in. But, yeah, this is... I've basically got to cut from the top of the map through this kind of farmland or the houses or whatever, kind of near the farm, um, down to sort of, yeah, the middle right-hand side of the map. And uh, this is where I just think they've gone a bit over the top. This is one of those sections that already, I've had to cut through here quite a few times to do various different things, and I don't hate it or anything, but it's just, again, it's a little bit boring, it's a little bit slow, and I don't even know, I mentioned this before, but, I mean, would you really consider it any more difficult because... I've dropped it into low range, diffs on, high low, um, and that's it. I'm just squeezing the throttle now. Like, there is no difficulty in that. It's no different to... Just imagine this was an arrow straight paved road. 
I'd stick a truck in high, squeeze the throttle and that's it. <laughs> Just kind of stare around, not a lot to do while my truck drives forward down a road. This is basically the same thing, but in slow motion. I'm not, I'm not worried about tipping or anything like that because I'm going nowhere near fast enough for that to ever be an issue. The only thing you've got to worry about cutting through here really is like you can see right now, I've bumped into a, a tree thing that's just laying in, under the water. Give it a couple of revs though, give it a bit of a nudge and uh, yeah, <laughs> ramp over that and we're off again. The nice thing though, I'm glad I chose Bruce in the end because uh, one thing Bruce is very good for is he is a definite heavy hauling machine. It can haul a lot of stuff. When I did a uh, test in it in the review, it drove up uh, all three quarry hills absolutely without issue, just walked the cargo up there and everything. It was probably one of the uh, smoothest runs out of every truck in the game. Um, yeah, it's got a great engine with it. The KZ GT is a beast of an engine. It's the same one that's in the Colobs. Uh, it's also the one they've put in the bore, although if I'm honest, I'm not all that impressed with the bore. It's not a terrible truck, but it's a bit average and it's kind of like, yeah, I probably would just take the Colob over the bore because it's, yeah, it's not got a lot of wheels, particularly at the front. It's only got its front axle. And they're quite narrow wheels, really. It's a lot of weight sat on just them. They sink very easily, and then it wheel spins quite a lot. At least with a, uh, a Colob, you've got eight wheels. They're bigger, wider, like the mud uh, wheels. They might even be slightly bigger, if not around. I can't remember off the top of my head how big the uh, Colob ones are. But either way, I'd say there's just more grip and everything in general. The Colob, yeah, I would just I'd use it, even though it's technically it's got the special advanced special gearboxes, so it'll be like a slower class than the bore in the high range but with the bore you spend most of your time in low range and stuff just because it gets stuck easy-ish and it wheel spins all the rest of it. Um, yeah Bruce I, I wasn't sure if his chin would be a bit of an issue but I kind of I knew the route I was going and I didn't think it'd matter too much and it turns out it didn't it's so uh, its chin was fine it was doing a good old job but yeah it's got 10 wheels plenty of grip and as I said plenty of power especially combined with like the advanced special gearbox is a pretty good gear but it's certainly not my favorite I still prefer high range but once I am heavy hauling and I've accepted that I'm just I'm gonna be going slower and there's nothing I can do to avoid it um yeah the advanced special is quite a nice fluid smooth gearbox that feels like it goes well yeah with the meaty engines and you have quite a lot of torque and all the rest of it so it always felt pretty good so get to the fuel thing uh, yeah five five fuel on Bruce and then my idea was to cut through here. Didn't realise until about now. I was like, oh no, there's a pipe. <laughs> Maybe chop my loaf's head off. Not too impressed about that. We'll have, a, have to have words about that later. So yeah, you can't limbo a loaf. Well, you probably can, I mean, let's be honest. He is a goddamn professional, but you can't limbo a loaf when he's on top of Bruce. And that is probably the first time that information has been brought forth to the internet. We're breaking records. So uh, yeah, in the end, I thought, right, sorry, I'll reverse up. I'll just loop sort of back around the way I came in. It's uh, not the end of the world. Certainly not worth getting rid of my horse. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he's got 300 repair points, which is quite a lot. And as I say, it's, it basically, the loaf works well as, like, a truck <laughs> roof rack. Now, especially now we can pack vehicles. I can pack it. I could even have stuck a, a, a loaf on Bruce's head if I wouldn't, to be honest. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't even know why I didn't. Uh, yeah, anyway, another three... For the uh, the paystar, that's my eight fuel done. And as I said, I originally didn't plan on bringing the ramped flatbed, so this would have just purely been the fuel run. And this was able to uh, limbo under the pipe. I think the crane was a little bit close, but it had no issues. It went under. Now, this truck is pretty small, though. For what it, when you actually park it next to something like the twin stick, you do realise that it's certainly not the biggest. But one cool thing about it. Again, let's like there is the eight slot, which I suppose now supersedes this. But forgetting the eight slot, because that is a bit awkward. The paystar tow it are like able to have a trailer behind it. I can have a, I've got three cargo on the actual paystar, and I could get another four on the trailer, which is seven. So if you got double paystars and double ramped flatbeds, you could actually have a fourteen cargo road train, which is pretty cool. Like I said, it, it in theory would be the most in the game, but now they have added that eight slot, you could potentially uh yeah tow like two eight slots and have a 16 cargo road train so I suppose that's kind of uh, beat it but again the eight slot as good as it is it's convenient if you need to haul a lot of cargo but yeah it's just such a pain in the ass to try and get around some of the maps if you're on a fairly open road route it's uh 
not too bad, but yeah, I mean, that's why I didn't bring the 8th slot down here, because I knew once I was getting into that fuel station, I just knew it'd be an awkward sod to turn around, all the rest of it, and even though, overall, because I've brought Bruce, and again, he's in the uh, advanced special gearbox, and it's got a lot of power, I don't think having this road train situation really, really slowed me down a hell of a lot, because in a second, I'm going to get back into high range. Cutting through that farm was just horrifically slow, no matter what. It seemed best to put Bruce in, like, high-low. So I'd be going high-low speeds, whether I was towing a paystar or not. Along here, certainly from, like, sort of near the uh, fuel station to going in here, I was in high range in Bruce, which was pretty nice. I probably would end up in high range cutting across this mud anyway. Uh, I just paused there to save the footage. That's basically, I didn't save the footage quite in time, that's why I lost, like, the first little section of me scanning across my first route, but it was all pretty much there, we just about saved it. Um, yeah, and like I said, when I'm motoring along, I'm in high for most of it. And there is sections as well, once I'm on the road, where I can get up into fifth gear out of, oh, five, yeah, fifth gear out of five, um, and I'm motoring along in fifth gear, which is as many gears as Bruce has got, so for the most part, this whole road train situation doesn't really slow me down. And again, that's the nice thing with Bruce, he's definitely like a heavy hauling machine. So even though I have got a lot of weight towing behind me, that was my cock up there, kind of accidentally went a bit wide, got in the way of the post. Yeah, so it's a, for the most part, it didn't really slow the journey down. It might have a little bit, but I suppose you've got to take your pick. It's either a road train like this, or do a run separately with Bruce, and then do the same run again with the Paystar, which... That's now two drives through the uh, horrifically slow farm and all the rest of it. So yeah, overall, I certainly think this saves more time than it loses. So, it's pretty handy that there's uh, plenty of fuel stations on this map. Filled Bruce up, filled the pace star. Again, just edit that out. Keep the video a little bit uh, shorter. So, cutting across this river, for some reason this river seems to have its... Um, grip or lack of grip characteristics dialed up to the maximum. Again, Bruce is doing better than anything else that's been through there so far. The P16 was slower through there. Um, the boar was pretty slow through there. I can't remember if I went through in the P512. I think I've been through in the Navistar and the Sega and the Dolphin and they're all a bit iffy through there. Whereas Bruce, it went all the way through in high range until I was climbing up the bank on the other side and then it ran out of juice and out to uh, I think I dropped it in the high low. But again, we are also hauling a road train, so it's not doing bad. This was the only section, if anything, I thought Bruce's chin might be a little bit of trouble, and it wasn't, to be honest. And again, this is one reason why I was uh, pretty happy by now that I actually took Bruce. Another reason why I did take Bruce is he's got rear steer, so not only, even though he's quite a long truck, um, manoeuvring around like in the fuel station, that wasn't really an issue to turn around. I can also take nice wide corners and sweep his nose round and again because we've got a very long road train I, I kind of need to go wide with Bruce so I don't cut the uh, the paystar in too tightly. And yeah just because he's got nice steering it's like you can afford to turn late basically. Whereas I end up, I do use the uh, Derry Longhorn like the normal one not the 4520 a little bit later and the steering feels horrifically slow on that. I'll get to that later but I'm just saying that if I was if I had the Derry now, then uh, yeah, taking these wide corners would probably involve a lot of three-point turns, etc. And uh, yeah, to be fair, I mean, low range, diffs on high low, Bruce just hauled his way through all of that. I went wide on the corner, as wide as I could. The pace starts getting a little bit uh, tippy. Not the end of the world, I mean, I'm just dragging it up the inside of the rocks. Fortunately, it wasn't enough. Like, the, uh, the fuel didn't become unpacked or anything like that. We haven't got anything on the ramp flatbed yet, so that wasn't an issue. But that's why I put the sideboard on the paystar over the flatbed. Just because then, even if the cargo did become unpacked, there's still a chance it could sit in the sideboard and sort of land back on your wheels and I can just click, like, pack cargo again instead of having to crane it all. That's a, I do prefer the look of the, si uh, the flatbed, really. But, yeah, it's, the cargo is so sensitive with un unpacking... And as soon as you unpack and that's tipping, it just slides straight off and there. Uh, yeah, in the long run, the sideboard can save you. Save you some hassle. So, um, I'm coming up now. This is the route I'm taking where I built that factory's bridge. You'll see in a minute, I didn't theoretically need to build the factory's bridge. There is actually a cut through across the river that I will uh, show you. 
but at the time I didn't know that, that's why I built the Factors Bridge the other day. And uh, yeah, the reason why I wanted to though, I wanted to go this way, is because once I got back, say after I got the fuel things and I got back to the fuel station, I could have either cut straight across, back across that slow as hell uh, farmland, kind of go up past my garage again and cut down the normal way. But I'm going to use that way later anyway when I go with the Taker. I just kind of wanted to mix it up. Yeah, find different routes along the map. And like I said, that's why I wanted to get the, uh, the factory's bridge done. So no issues there. I don't think there is any missions ever to clean those rock slides out of the way of the road. It'd, uh, again, it'd be quite good if they did add some kind of plough that could knock the rocks out of the way and they'd actually stay out of the way. And as I said before, I might test this in a future video. In theory, if you get the snowplow on the wrecker and move rocks out of the way, if you park a trailer nearby, the map often can't reset the surroundings. Like, you know, it can't refresh the ice, it can't move the rocks back, etc. So I might try at some point, uh, yeah, getting the wrecker out, clear a little path and see if I park a trailer nearby, if it just holds those rocks in place and stops them refreshing. So... This is, in the end, why I didn't bring the derry, because as I was cutting across that bridge, literally take a little trip down here, and there's metal beams. I am going for a bit of an over-the-top, dramatic, uh, wide entrance going on over here. <laughs> yeah, wide entrance, that's what she said. Um, the reason why, you'll see in a second, it's kind of good that it happened, because it'll uh, show what I was already trying to avoid. Because the ramped flatbed is a pain in the arse, and it flips too easily. What I didn't want to do was get the metal beams on, and then have to kind of do some kind of reversing manoeuvre. And then the trailer flip and spit the uh, uh, the metal beams off. So this is another one of those buildings, metal framing, that you can just scavenge to. And I might end up saving one or two of them, just leaving them on the map. Because like I said, it's a bit of a shame once you've destroyed them. It would be kind of good if you could take the metal beams back and rebuild them. And again, I think they, uh, they'd missed a potential option on this game that they could give you the option of buying new properties, you know, buy new warehouses for storage and all sorts. So, after my big overdramatic wide turn, I was going to go back up the way I came down. And just while I was driving off, I wanted to look over there with the camera and show you guys, you can see the rocks that form like a little bridge over the river. And then I suddenly decided, yeah, sod it, <laughs> I'm actually going over it because, uh, yeah, I want to. So in theory, like I said, I didn't really need to build the factory's bridge because I could have just brought the uh, Bruce down here as well and done the whole road train going over here. But yeah, it gets over there pretty well. Give a little smash on my suspension. I got it in high range though. I just wanted to floor it, <laughs> get going. But yeah, it cuts up, it cuts over there, no issues. It's a pretty straight forward, like fairly smooth uh, rock bridge thing. But even climbing up here, I mean, I did run out of juice in high. It also wouldn't even move in low. I had to go to low range diffs on to feed the power back in before it even moves. But yeah, this mud itself isn't particularly trollish or horrifically slow. It was just more all the weight I'm hauling and everything was uh, slowing me down a little bit. But this is certainly the nice thing is, especially that I've got the metal beams as well. That ticks off, uh, yeah, eight lots of fuel and two metal beams. I've only got to get two cargo containers and two lots of consumables after that, which is uh, certainly a lot more simple. So yeah, I parked Bruce there last time, because like I said, I thought I'd bring the Paystar back up, connect up my road train and carry on, but instead I'll meet it over the other side of the bridge. Pretty nice views from that bridge though. I do quite like when I park there, have a little look around. Again, they have been pretty good uh, at making maps that look good. I mean, Lake Cov, yeah, that's still, it still does look nice in the right light and everything. It looks pretty nice. Imandra has got a lot of good looks to it. It's certainly a bit of a hellish landscape to try and constantly claw your way over, but it does actually look quite nice. Um, flooded foothills, not bad. Again, when you're up in the mountains, it's some pretty nice views as well. It's Big Salmon Peak, again, same thing. Not bad. It's, it's still a well done map. I certainly think these are probably up there as among my favourite. Like, before these came out, I think stuff like uh, Michigan, Black, what was it called, Black River, uh, Smithfield Dam, those were two really nice maps. They're still up there as my favourite, but yeah, these ones, like I said, the main thing I don't like about this map, that farmland area is just, yeah, too slow, they're 
overdone it on the slowness of the mud. It's like super mud again or whatever. And as I said, it's not hard, it's not difficult. You just squeeze the throttle and that's it. You just sit around, put a YouTube video on or something. <laughs> twiddle your fingers for five minutes and wait till you're over the other side of it. It doesn't present any challenge or enjoyment, it's just, yeah, some boring thing that you got to do every now and then. And uh, I think for the most part, that river section, it's kind of the same route really, they've gone a bit over the top on that river section. And as well as you cut through to the railway station, but again, at least they're little patches. For the most part, I might be able to avoid Particularly now I have built that factories bridge. I probably could just go the long way round, come down this way, go back over the factories bridge, cut across that middle island and pop out at the fuel station at kind of the bottom end of the farm, which I probably will do in future because, again, I just... I'm the sort of person I'd rather take a 10-minute detour around a 5-minute traffic jam, even though I appreciate it's going to take me twice as long to drive around it. Just the fact that I'm keeping moving and stuff I enjoy more than just, yeah, sitting in traffic for five minutes. Zap me power a little bit there with the, uh, the mud. But for 99% of the time, pretty much. Uh, yeah, now I'm in high range. I think I go into auto now, and as you'll see, it'll, uh, it will get up to, five, like, yeah, fifth gear out of five, so. It might be holding me a few mile an hour off my top speed if I wasn't towing the pay star but again it can't be a lot otherwise it wouldn't make it up into top gear it'd just stay in fourth and uh, yeah Bruce doing well over all the rocks they didn't create any issues to be honest so that was uh, pretty nice worst case again there is always the mods the JBE uh, Bruce oh no it's not the JBE Bruce is it it's, uh, is it the M181 Bruce I think JBE's done the uh, yeah John and then we need a uh, a dolphin <laughs> and a loaf. Always got to have a loaf. But again, I don't know. Like the loaf works so well as it does, even with its small tires and all the rest of it. It's uh yeah, definitely got to be careful if you mod that one because you don't want to upset the natural greatness of it. It's already a goddamn horse or a vehicle. It does what you need it to do. So uh, yeah, this is the power station. Finally here, again, this was what, already over halfway through the video, this was like the main hauling mission that was uh, taking a bit of time, the next one's a bit easier. Takes ages, that little skip you've seen there must have been a glitch in the video, it doesn't take the cargo off you very quickly anymore to be honest. It's not the end of the world, it's just a little bit slow. So it's one down, a little toot from Bruce, break a fence while we're there. Good job they don't send me the bill for broken fences in this game, because I'd be skint if they did. <laughs> I'd be having to uh, declare bankruptcy or something. Especially on White Valley. The amount of times I'll smash that army base up. Surprised they didn't come after me. Uh, so yeah, that's the 8 fuel delivered. Uh, the 2 metal beams delivered. And for whatever reason, it just worked out nicely. I'm going to park all my trucks over here. <laughs> Even though uh, straightened me, neatened my trailer up a little bit. This is going to be the parking spot for them. Again, a bit of a pathetic, sad horn, really. Bruce's horn isn't amazing, but it's not bad. It's, like, average. Yeah, that Paystar horn is just pretty terrible. So, like I say, next up was these, which, originally, I would probably be setting off the Derry now to go down to that factory's bridge, grab the metal beams, etc. But, as I said, I think in the long run it probably worked out better. So, just... I wasn't necessarily going to tow this long. What I was just curious to see, once I hoover the winch in, could I get into high gear in the Tager and just motor along like high gear with a road train? But the Derry turned early, hit the concrete fence. I was like, yeah, well, <laughs> bye Derry. That was your chance. Now you're going to get left there. But he may, he may make an appearance later. Yeah, this setup, obviously sideboard, ramped flatbed again. Still don't like the ramped flatbed. I wish there was some other version of a four slot. Or at least a sideboard ramped flatbed kind of thing, so it has an extra chance of keeping the cargo in or on it. But yeah, this option, I've got uh, six slots, so two lots of containers, they're two slot each, so I'll bang them on the trailer. And then, uh, yeah, two consumables. Pretty simple. The, uh, the Tager is getting a little bit squirrely there. I've got the custom muds on this one again, I went and found my original Tager, so I could... Uh, yeah, see how the custom muds do on this map. I was just curious. I've been I used the one anyway the other day 
with the chain done that, and I felt it rolled a little bit easily. This one certainly feels better. When you got the uh, these custom muds on, not only do they sit wider, but I feel like they're heavier tyres, so I feel like the overall gain on your centre of gravity is it just lowers it and kind of keeps it nice and centred. So it makes the uh, yeah the Tega overall sort of harder to tip, really. So it's pretty plain sailing, flying down there from the garage. Didn't even I again? I know I do say it, I, sh I should have flown in and grabbed some fuel, but I was only burnt like 20 litres by then. To be fair, the Tega's got a bit of a uh, decent sized fuel tank on it, and I've only got to go to the railway station, cut back across, up to the uh, the power plant, and yeah, I think fuel just won't be an issue in this case. That's also why. A little bit of a risk, but I've not brought a, uh, a goddamn horse or a vehicle with me for this one, because we'll see. See if it can make it on its own. You can see now I'm crawling along the left-hand side of this. It looks pretty slow still. Well, it is still pretty slow. But it's faster than this thing would do if I just drove through the water, kind of a truck or two to my, uh, my right. You can cut along the bank for a little bit. You can see that rock coming up that I've got to swerve around, and pretty much as I drive off that, You'll see, the camera's kind of getting wedged up against the cliff. Quite a handy little bear's eye view though, you can see a lot of the rocks sort of under the water. And yeah, as you can see, I mean, I'm steering left and right, kind of bumping over the stones. The Tager's not terrible for getting over rocks and stuff, it's got decently sized tyres and all the rest of it, plenty of power, in theory. Although I still feel like, I feel like every, something's been nerfed in this game, just, again, it could be the gearboxes, the rev cap, something. Or it feels just a little bit less powerful than it used to. But again, it might not have lost any power. It might just be, yeah, slightly more severe rev caps that are not letting you apply that power. But we got through there for the most part. I didn't actually have to cut anything out of there. It uh, didn't take three odd minutes like it did the other day with the uh, <laughs> P512 and a couple of other things. To be honest, we're pretty slow through there. Typical bumpy tyres. The only reason I'm cutting around this way is uh, you've kind of got this storage area where I've built cargo and on the other side is the railway yard. So I just thought first for my cargo containers, I remember building some here. I built small, medium and large pipes, cargo containers and fuel. One thing, just to let you know if you're going to do this mission again, you can craft fuel here. Which is a bit odd. Well, I suppose it's not. You're using fuel to craft fuel. I suppose you're just sticking them in barrels. In theory, I could have created eight fuel there. And instead of going the way I did to that fuel storage, like in the middle of the forest. I could come down here and get, um, yeah, eight fuel that way. To be honest, I'm glad I didn't. Because, again, otherwise this whole mission would just be multiple trips down here and then to the power plant. So I'm glad I kind of mixed it up. And again, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to get consumables from the other side because you can't build them there. So then I come round to the train yard side of it. Got my two consumables. You can build consumables at the cargo creation zone one. So in theory, there, are, there is unlimited. Just to try and avoid cutting through that river again, I was even considering looping like, shall I follow the train tracks up and loop around the top? In the end, I was like, well, it's probably not really worth it. But it just shows you how terrible this little cut through I'm going to like this watery section and again I was looking could I go up here and loop round but there's a rock pathway up there that I cut over there in the twin steer the other day and it was just a little bit terrible it didn't go too well it was very tippy and what I didn't want to do especially with the ramp flatbed I wasn't too worried about the Tager but I would pretty much bet money that the uh, the ramp flatbed would have found, found a way to tip I haven't got a crane on this one either, so I would have had to have sent in something, and yeah. In the long run, I decided, you know what? Two minutes to claw through here is probably the uh, the best option. But yeah, it just feels like it zaps all your power, and I'll be able to show you something in a little bit that kind of shows that this area has been dialed up like Spinal Tap turned it up to 11 on like resistance stats, because as you can see, I'm practically not even moving now. And the Tega, I think we can all agree, is easily one of the best trucks in the game. Um, yeah, some people would say the best. I think it's certainly up there. This Bruce and the Dolphin, the Voron Grad, they're all extremely good trucks. But this is easily, yeah, it's up there. It's one of the best. And I can barely move. And later on, I cut through some deeper water a lot easier. So yeah, they have purposely dialed these sections up beyond what the rest of the game is 
uh, expecting or causing to happen. Again, when the footage comes up soon, <laughs> I'll explain it probably a bit better than I just have. So, the good news is though, that kind of gave me an excuse. In the end, after cutting through there, I was trying to winch the trees, they're all popping out the floor. I thought, sod it, I know exactly what I can do. I've already got the derry uh, ready set up, so I'll send that in. That gives me kind of an excuse to drive this thing as well. And to be fair, I do quite like this derry these days. Again, it's not my favourite or anything, but they've sorted... Uh, it's got diff locks always on. It's got all-wheel drive. They've moved that central axle out of the way, so it's just it at least lifts up out of the way, so it's not as in the way as it used to be. That used to be an absolute killer for just going over the brow of anything. Those wheels are just get locked in the way. There's no power going to them, that's it. It kind of sees all your back end up off the floor, so you've got no pushing power. And you get stuck everywhere. But yeah, since then, they've kind of fixed it and tweaked it. And uh, I certainly prefer this derry to the 4520. That's still a bit of a, uh, a letdown, to be honest. I even considered, but I very wisely talked myself out of it. <laughs> I was like, oh, should I take the derry to go to the fuel depot? I was going to take the derry instead of the Paystar. Because I knew Bruce would be hauling it along. But in the end, I decided, you know what? It's so terrible, it's not worth it. Like, all we'll learn from it is that it is still terrible. It's still a big, fat, heavy lump of underpowered gutlessness that, yeah, it's just going to zap loads of power away from Bruce that I may as well let Bruce keep <laughs> and haul me fuel a lot easier. So, uh, yeah, that's why I didn't bring it. But I've not hauled this thing out for a while, and as far as uh, with this step deck trailer, as I said, if I was going to fly down and grab those metal beams, this would have gone pretty well. It's turning on it, as you see here. It's like, God damn, that is horrific. I'm just going to cut out here where I turn around, because... It was probably about 40 seconds of... It was not even a bad turnaround. I got it pretty precise. It was just, uh, yeah, like a massive wide turning circle <laughs> while I'm trying to spin it around. So, this was my plan. I mean, I suppose in this one situation, if I already did have the 8 slot, it might have been even better because it'll reach further into the river. But yeah, reverse the uh, Darien. Use its trailer to kind of reach for the uh, the Tega. For whatever reason, again, it wouldn't let me use the winch from the Derry to the Tega. So I went in the Tega to the Derry, did it that way round. At the minute, I'm just hoovering the winch in. But then when I let off the button to hoover it in, the Derry is now driving as well. So between the pair of them, it's uh, hauling me out of here quicker. Again, I probably could have just sat here squeezing the throttle and watched my truck move at like 0.1 mile an hour. At about the same speed as wind erosion. Um, yeah, it was more fun to bring the derry, <laughs> and again, it probably didn't even really cost me a lot of time. It only took a couple of minutes to fly down here with that, and uh, certainly better than watching that thing go, yeah, the same speed as, I don't know, grass grows or something. And yeah, this thing is a pretty good hauling machine, this. Considering it is hauling a Tega through that dodgy mud section and uh, six lots of cargo with it as well I suppose and its own step deck and of course a goddamn professional but he never the only time he ever weighs you down is when he is a weight distribution loaf and then it is his job to provide weight but until that time he's practically weightless just the loaf that keeps on giving keeps on saving you bacon if, to be fair they didn't uh, really weren't really needed today the loafs I mean, of course, they always are. Moral support loafs, again. Always cheer me up when i got a loaf with me. And they always know the mission will go smoothly. That's probably why they went smoothly, because we had a pair of loafs overseeing proceedings. <laughs> again, I went wide around that corner. It was nice to miss the lamppost or the telegraph pole, whatever. Turning this thing back the other way, the steering is ridiculously slow on it. You know, it's not the end of the world. Once you get used to it, you just... Yeah. But you still have to let off the throttle a bit, hold the stick over to the right, left, whatever, for like three seconds before it even starts going. Take another n nice wide line, sweep it into there so I don't crash the Tager into that lamp. But again, they like to put posts on the inside of corners, and then they give you stuff like the 8 slot that just has no hope in hell of making it around a corner. <laughs> Try and straighten that trade up. I cut a bit out because it was just slow, <laughs> painfully slow. Truck number three done though, and then uh, yeah, last one, Tager. Two cargoes and two consumables. 
and uh, yeah, drop these off and we're done. And you'll see, it kind of blocks it a bit with this screen, but it'll say metal or rolled metal production plant unlocked. It doesn't mention the brick one, just above where it says saving. I don't know why, but as I said, the main reason, I mean, XP is nice, but I don't need it anymore. 15 odd grand, which is a pretty nice chunk. And yeah, it's the two access to locations being unlocked is what I really wanted. So there's my line of trucks, that's everyone who uh, helped get the job done. And yeah, it was a pretty nice mission overall. Went pretty smoothly, all things considered. So, now I'll show you. Um, yeah, the first place I've unlocked now is this, which is on that central island. I kind of used the road to cut across. And the next one is that, which is the brick producing place. Now this metal place, uh, I already scouted it earlier with an ANK. So, I had one there ready, so I'll just kind of show you quickly while I've got it all unlocked. Um, yeah, so this one, as I said, you can turn uh, metal beams into metal rolls. One metal beam will get you two metal rolls. On the map Greenwoods River, it's take two metal rolls there and you can turn it into one metal beam. So they kind of do opposites, but the good news is we've got unlimited metal beams at Cargo Creation Zone 1 just by using fuel. So now, in theory, we've got unlimited uh, metal rolls as well and then I drew a marker from this central island uh, across to the brick place and we'll go and show you that as well. I left this little bit of footage in because it was a nice little drive. Uh, I'm about to cross where the wooden bridge is on this map that you have to build and it costs eight planks but while we're on the way in fact I'll just quickly explain as well. The other day I drove down to the sawmill on this and you can take medium logs or long logs to the sawmill and make wooden planks and what you got was, I think, if you took medium logs, you get six planks. And if you take long logs, you get 12 planks. So long story short, it's certainly worth taking long logs if you can, because you get double the amount of planks. But yeah, I said a little while ago, I still stand by it, but yeah. This bridge takes eight planks, and I said, oh, it's a bit of a greedy bridge, but yeah. Upon experimenting and taking medium and long logs down to the uh, sawmill, I've built, I've got like, what is it, 18 wooden planks there now so can you see though sorry this ANK just cut through that water the water was deep enough that the sideboard on the back near enough disappeared and all sorts this thing clawed through there way easier than what the trucks are handling like on that little river section near the uh, near the railway station like the Tager was struggling through there so it just shows you that they have dialed it up more than it needs to be if it behaved the same as like that section just did, then in theory you should be able to just stick to first gear auto or whatever and crawl through there. Again, you might be crawling a bit, but at least, yeah, at five miles an hour or something, so it doesn't take three minutes to cover like three truck lengths. And you can see, I mean, this Tega almost tipped there. That's kind of why I'm driving up in this little gully, because in theory, if I do tip, I won't quite go 90 degrees. The gully will kind of hopefully keep me upright enough to where I can still fire my engine up, fling a winch out. But that's why I didn't really want to use this the other day um, for doing cargo, because it's a little bit... Yeah, once it tips, these custom muds, now it's got that, they do certainly help. I'll give it that. But it is still a little bit risky, and uh, yeah. And obviously, because it has to have the sideboard on, you can't add a crane or anything like that. So if you do tip, I'm going to have to send something in with a crane, so then I just think... I'll just take something else in the first place. So this is the brick plant, and for that you need one cement and one packaged sand. And packaged sand you get from this, Cargo Creation Zone 2, which is in the quarry. I went there the other day uh, with a generator and some fuel, and I built 40 lots of packaged sand. So it's only like 100 fuel per packaged sand, so quite a lot. And you get cement from Cargo Creation Zone 1. So again, in theory, we've got unlimited bricks because I've got unlimited package sand and unlimited cement. So uh, that's everything I've unlocked. That'll prepare me up for the uh, next missions going along. So yeah, all in all, been a pretty successful day. And uh, yeah, like I say, that's about it for today though. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, thanks for my Patreon members, and I'll be back soon.